What's up everybody? Today in After Effects we are going to take some audio with a really thick bass line and we're going to use that bass line to animate some great blurry stuff like it's shaking the camera around and it's going to be great. It's going to be off all the hooks. If you have hooks in your house it's going to be off them. If you're hooked on phonics it's going to get you off that too. Get off your butts, go to After Effects, sit on your butts again and then we're going to make this happen. I'm Evan Abrams and this is How to Sync Audio in After Effects to Pump Some Bass. Pump, pump it. Now the first thing we're going to need to do is import some footage. So just go down to import file and we're going to use the work file here and drag that onto a new composition to make a composition the size and shape. Make sure you don't have caps lock on and you're good to go. So you can see you've got a person, they're talking, their mouth is moving and if you look down at the audio waveform by hitting LL you can see that we have not only the voice track and the bass sound but they're both there and we need to sort them out. So we're going to use the bass and treble, drag that on there, and we're going to basically increase the bass up to like 100 and decrease the treble so that everything over a certain amount is going to be used and everything under a certain amount is going to be discarded. And then we're just going to convert audio to keyframes using the menu, and there it is. And what this has done is it's separated the uh, audio out into all these data points showing the amplitude of uh, the volume. So that's about it. That's why we had to separate it or else it would just be showing us the volume. But first we need a new adjustment layer to actually make use of those. And we're going to just apply some effects to this that will then be controlled by the audio amplitude. So I think I want to use the magnify to get things kind of coming in your face. So we'll just set this up a little bit. Uh, you can see here that we want to make the size of it uh, to cover the entire frame and then set the uh, magnification down to 100 for now, but hold down Alt and click on the stopwatch there, and then we'll just enter in an expression later. But uh, let's get ourselves a blur as well, perhaps the fast blur, that is the cheapest of the blurs, and uh, make sure that you have that box checked. We'll continue the edge pixels, we don't want weird edges. And the last thing is hold down Alt and click the stopwatch of the opacity. So now when we select that, and uh, we hit U, you can see these are the three things that we need to add some expressions to. So we're going to open up the audio amplitude, delete the two parts that we don't need, and we're just going to use the both channels here. And we're going to select the first thing there, we're going to type in 100 plus, and then we're going to pick whip down and add the slider value to 100 to make the magnification. So it's always going to be 100 plus whatever that is. But it seems like a bit much, so we're going to go ahead and put in some brackets around that and then just multiply the pick whipped value by like 0.5 or something to kind of just get it under control. Your numbers might be different, but this is going to work out for these numbers. So down to the next one, and we're just going to pick whip down to the slider control, and that seems to create some decent results. You can again change it by multiplying the result, but on to the third one. Again, pick whip that down so that the opacity is changing and uh, we'll just add a little modifier to that too and it looks like we are so far so good so that is the basics that we're going to tie this adjustment layer into the audio and make sure that first you separated the base out of that audio but uh, to refine a little bit we're going to use the linear expression to kind of cap some of those values so we're going to say linear 25 to 50, so any values from 25 to 50 will be remapped to something like 0, 50. So basically turning anything under 25 down to 0. And just make sure that the first value in that array is the value of the layer you're in. So just pick whip that up there. So you've got five things in that expression. And you can see that kind of caps off and causes a bunch of like zero points to happen. And of course, your file will be different than my file. So you might have to change your numbers a little bit. So instead of 25 to 50, maybe you need 10 to 50 to be re remapped to zero to 50. But whatever the case may be, uh, that should get you there in short order. So the rest of the things to do are things like adding lens flares, for example, because no rap video is complete without lens flares. So we're going to do that, and we're going to tie that in to the final product as well. So go ahead and go new, and we're going to have a new solid. Make that solid black. 
And you can use third-party lens flares, but we're just going to use the lens flares that come with After Effects. So drag that out. And as you can see, they're pretty underwhelming. Um, but, you know, I don't really care. And Alt-click on the brightness. And we're going to use the same expression that we used uh, for the magnification because we wanted it 100% brightness and maybe a little bit extra. So you might need to modify the expression a little bit, but copy and paste whenever you can. And it looks a bit too sharp, so put another fast blur on there and repeat edge pixels and only blur it horizontally and I'm gonna blur it by like 300. All right, so that's, that's kind of doing it. And maybe change up the type of lens flare it is. But again, everything is gonna be synced up, so just go ahead and duplicate that and add another one in so that there's more stuff going on and move them around to be more appealing. So let's change maybe two types. You got blue on one side, red on the other. And you might want to alter their modifiers just so that, you know, they're not exactly the same. Maybe one's coming in a bit brighter. And uh, then we just change its mode to something like add. And then maybe take its opacity down a little bit just because it's a little bit much. All right. So that's, that's kind of good, I suppose. Um, now we're going to be needing a new adjustment layer so that we can add some styling to this and we're going to use a tint at 25 percent and we're going to use a curves and the curves adjustment you know you just give it some sharp contrast maybe crush a bunch of the blacks out at the bottom uh, you're going to need to tweak the color so I usually put an S shape in for the reds and then the reverse S shape for the blues that kind of makes a cross process look if that's something you're into, I don't really know, but I'm just kind of showing you what I did. Uh, then I throw down a tritone on top of that and use uh, that nice 250-50 blue and uh, just tweak that to not be totally dominating the scene. And then uh, you kind of just have to tweak it to taste from there. So you got to look for look for things you can you can push in on and maybe make it a little bit darker, bring out some of the things. Uh, maybe the reds are incorrect here, and maybe we're maybe we're neglecting the green channel and uh, that kind of thing. Maybe we're not, and maybe it just needs less tinting so that we can keep some of the colors in there. But you know, nonetheless, I think I'm pretty happy with how that is. And then uh, we need to, of course, add a vignette because no project is complete until you have a vignette of some kind. And I cover this in a tutorial, I think about how to make vignettes. It's an early one, so if you want to go back and watch that, that's good. But I use the circle generator, uh, change it to black, and then uh, invert the circle and just make it really, really big so it's on the outside edge and then feather it out a lot. So usually it's 1080 and then 720, so 1080 size, 720 feather. And then I just set it to be multiply and then change its opacity as needed, but uh, this is kind of doing it for me. So hopefully this tutorial helps you out. Uh, as you can see, it's kind of in your face and it all links into the audio. And something you need to be aware of though is that when you use this convert audio to keyframe stuff, that uh, it's gonna be converting all the audio that you have on. So if you have a bunch of audio tracks, it's gonna be looking at all of them. And again, if you don't have the ability to swap out the bass or to separate it externally, then you'll have to use that bass and treble thing. So hopefully that helps you out. I'm Evan Abrams. Hopefully this tutorial has been helpful for you. I hope you make some great, I don't know, rap musics or something and uh, that it is as dope and sick as you want it. So thank you so much for watching. Check out the channel. There's new tutorials every week. And uh, stop by the Facebook page, ask questions, hit me up on Twitter at EC Abrams, and, uh, you know, just reach out if you have any questions, and I will see you around the Internet. Thanks a lot, and uh, see you next week for new tutorials. Stop by. you got to subscribe because it's really good because I said it was.